You know, I originally got into the flat earth movement and the debunking community because I was fascinated with how people could possibly think the earth was flat in the 21st century. And I've come up with some very good ideas about it. These are people that are looking for a sense of power and authority in a community, a sense of acceptance that they don't get otherwise in their lives. These are people that have very strong religious beliefs or just are conspiratorial thinkers. Now, I've looked at flat earth scholars such as Nathan Oakley and Quantum Eraser and saw how they tried to redefine the scientific method, not to improve science or protect science, but to give them plausible deniability on obvious facts such as satellite photos of the Earth which show it to be spherical, a planet orbiting the sun in space. Then I listened to them try to deny something as basic as gravity or the distance to the sun. Between Newton and Einstein, we've got a very good understanding of gravity. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. We know the distance to the sun within yards, and we know the distance to the moon within inches. These are all established facts, and they're beyond debate. They're only subject to refinement. Now, the other day, my friend Larry sent me a very interesting video by this gentleman right here. This is Dr. Lee McIntyre. He is a PhD level academic that studies conspiracy theories and has done so for a number of decades. So I had a look at this 30 minute video and I found it fascinating. So much to the point that I actually bought his book on how to talk to science deniers. Now I've been reading it for the last few days and you know, these are my notes on the first two chapters of the book. So I thought I'd share some of this information with you because not only does it go right along with what I've seen in the science denying community, it just puts it together in such an elegant way. Now, what he did was very interesting. He put on a flannel shirt and he bought a ticket to the Flat Earth International Conference in Denver, Colorado in 2018. Perhaps you'll remember that one. And as it turns out, he wasn't the only person that went to that convention undercover. Logan Paul came as well. In fact, he was one of the keynote speakers, and little did they know that he was basically setting them up to do a mockumentary on the Flat Earth, which was released that winter. Right around the time of this conference, there was another film crew working on a documentary on the Flat Earth called Behind the Curve. Behind me is the laser ring gyro that they used to determine that the Earth rotated at 15 degrees per hour and then tried to hide the fact. This was also where Jaron had his interesting observation of Earth curvature. We'll get into that a little bit more later. But right now, let's cue up the music and let's learn a little bit about that conference and some of the findings that Dr. McIntyre wrote about in his book, How to Talk to a Science Denier. Now, Dr. McIntyre's book explored all science denial, not just the flat earth. He just described flat earth as the ultimate form of science denial. Now, why flat earth? Now, that's because the flat earth is probably the silliest and easiest to disprove of all science denial. You know, you can actually raise some points or questions about vaccinations or global warming. But the flat earth is so easy to disprove, it ranks up there with moon landing denial. There really are no redeeming features to the flat earth, yet people still believe in it. So you have to ask yourself, how on earth could they possibly hide the shape of the earth? Well, if you're a flat earther, the answer is really quite easy. A government or group of governments or powerful corporations or whoever they are that can fake the moon landings and pull off a red flag operation such as 9-11 could easily hide the shape of the earth. If you didn't immediately dismiss that statement, you too could possibly be a flat earther. You would just have to take it to the extreme. 
Now, most flat earthers will tell you that they originally bought into the mainstream explanation that the earth was a sphere. It was a planet orbiting the sun in space, just a tiny pale blue dot in the middle of a vast universe. But then they claimed they began to look at the evidence. And after looking at the evidence, they couldn't convince themselves that the earth was indeed a planet, a spherical planet. Well, why is this? Well, let's look at the evidence and the reasoning of the flat earth. First of all, in their minds, if I can't prove that the earth is a globe, it must be flat. I don't require any proof that the earth itself is flat. I just have to convince myself somehow that it's not a globe. But what about the mountains and reams of evidence that show the earth is a globe? Well, if I question it, I disprove it. That's really all that it takes to disprove it. I just have to say, well, I'm not sure about it. Or this doesn't convince me somehow. And then it's disproven. Finally, based on this conspiracy to hide the true shape of the earth, I have to look at all of this evidence done by people like scientists that say the earth is a globe, and I have to view it with suspicion. Who funded these people? Were they university trained? Do they have any ulterior motives that I can assign to them? In short, everything they say has to be viewed with suspicion because they're biased. You have proof, you say? Great. Did you observe it yourself? And do you have it right here, right now to present? Because all proof has to be personally obtained and it must be immediately available upon request. Otherwise, your proof is invalid. Truthfully, I don't even have to wait for you to pull it up off of your computer. If you can't pull it out of your back pocket, hold it up in front of me on a, on a nice presentation board, and you didn't obtain that evidence yourself by personally manipulating the independent variable, I don't have to believe it, and I won't. So let's have a look at the standard of proof for the flat earth. First of all, we have to accept the fact that a convoluted and highly improbable non-scientific explanation is always preferable to reproducible science. Why accept latitude and longitude as measured directly and personally by a sextant if I can come up with another explanation that somehow invalidates it, however unlikely that explanation may be? Second of all, the proof must be personally obtained. You can't rely on anybody else to do it. You want to tell me Antarctica exists? Have you personally been to the South Pole? Did you take pictures? Do you have a GPS? Did somebody take a video of you reading your GPS at the South Pole next to the pole? Well, if you don't have all of that, the South Pole obviously does not exist because you can't prove that it exists, at least not to my standard. And by the way, you better have all of that proof available to you instantly. As soon as I ask you, you should be able to hold it up. All you have to do is punch it up on your phone and there it is. Oh, you have that? Well, did you have a witness? Is that witness here? Oh, you do have your witness with you? Well, do you have your airline ticket that shows that you actually went to New Zealand? Where's your passport? I want to see the stamp. Now, one thing that Dr. McIntyre talks about is the standard of proof against the flat earth. Well, first of all, there is no definitive experiment that can prove that the earth is flat. One of the more common things that you'll hear is, well, there's no flat earth map. Well, of course there's no flat earth map because there's no flat earth. And if there was a flat earth map, we could actually test it against reality. And if it failed that test, well, that would invalidate the flat earth to a normal person. But you can't run that risk, so you say that there is no flat earth map. In other words, your assertion that the earth is flat is untestable and unfalsifiable. Now, if you do present actual evidence to them, first of all, they'll ignore it. And then they'll ignore it again. And then they'll play the, but what about game? Uh, you know, when Blue Marble Science did his Cavendish experiment, which clearly demonstrated mass attracting mass. Well, did you put it in a Faraday cage? Did you measure the magnetic fields? What kind of wood did you use? Is that wood diamagnetic? Did you check for that? If they make the mistake of actually presenting some quote unquote flat earth evidence, be it a photograph that we see too far or anything else that the flat earth deems to come up with, if you refute it, well, first of all, they won't listen to your argument refuting it. Second of all, they'll just move on to their next talking point. 
they'll just ignore the fact that you refuted their argument. And then it'll be the next talking point and the next talking point. If you have a hundred proofs of the flat earth and you disprove every single one of them, they'll come up with 101. And surprisingly, the very next day, they'll start over again at one. Why is this? Because they don't believe your evidence. Even if they saw your evidence, which is unlikely, when I spoke with Ranty, formerly Ranty Flat Earth, he told me outright that Flat Earthers do not look at debunking videos. They never want to see any evidence to the contrary of their narrative. It doesn't interest them in any way, shape, or form. Now, in our next episode, what I want to talk about is what Dr. McIntyre calls the five tropes of science denial. Now, a trope is a literary mechanism, a party line, so to say. If you look at the definition of it here, it's an overused device or theme. So the, basically, this is the five themes of science denial. And let me just go over them real quick in preparation for our next episode. It's cherry picking, conspiracy theory, reliance on false experts at the expense of real experts, logical errors in scientific reasoning, and impossible expectations of science. We've already alluded to a number of these. Conspiracy theory is a hallmark of science denial. Somebody must be hiding the truth, and you're the special one that figured it all out. That makes you one of the elite that's going to eventually save the world because you woke up and you saw the truth. Impossible expectations of science. Well, things have to be measured physically with a tape measure, like the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Vaccines have to be 100% effective. Included in this is also putting conditions on science that are unrealistic, such as redefining the scientific method, or that science based on mathematics is pseudoscience rather than real science. So we'll talk about this in our next episode. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you found this interesting. Check out the description for a link to the book. It's $20 on Kindle. It's well worth the read. So until next time, take care.